Well, hello there. Welcome to another edition of the Library Scoop, the official podcast of the Niles Main District Library. I am Jabez and welcome. Welcome to my home. Now, unfortunately, with the stay-at-home order by the governor, the library is closed for the meantime. So that means we get to do the podcast off-site. The show must go on, as Queen always says. So it's time to introduce our next guest. She happens to be my supervisor and the head of digital services. Let's welcome Susie into the library scoop. Susie, how's it going? Hi, Javis. how are you? I'm doing pretty good, how about yourself? I'm doing well, I'm doing well, just working from home today, or as you can see, the uh, virtual library background here. Nice, long time no seek. Um, you're in mm -hmm. my, my house, uh, working okay. from home as well. And it's been, it's been a bit of a challenge just like to combine like working from home and like the distractions and all that. So it's been, it's been interesting. I don't, I don't know. How about you? Well, I just recently got a cat. So that's been a welcome distraction. But I would also say it is a little, it is a little challenging working from home. And it's, uh, it's been a number of weeks now. And, you know, every day is something different, right? Absolutely. I agree. Love cats, by the way. I don't know if I told yeah. you, I have two dogs and a cat. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. I think she's going to wonder where I go when I finally go back to work because I'm home all the time right now. Let's get to our episode today. So April 1st was uh, Census Day. Now, for people like me and half yes. Americans at home, we have no idea what census is. So from your expertise, what is the census and why is it so important? So the census is something that counts every person living in the United States and the five territories. Um, and the count is mandated by the Constitution and it's conducted by the US Census Bureau, which is actually a nonpartisan government agency. Um, responding to the census is kind of like your civic duty, similar to voting, right? Like it's everyone's right to do. Um, and then in addition to just doing it because it's something that is part of our Constitution, it also affects the amount of funding your community receives, um, how your community plans for the future, and um, your representation in government. Um, so specifically, the data for this 2020 census will be um, ensuring public service and funding for schools, hospitals, and fire departments. It will help plan new homes, businesses, and improved neighborhoods. And then most importantly, it will determine how many seats your state gets allotted in the House of Representatives. So. There is a, there's a lot, you know, that comes out of the census. So you're pretty much telling me it's a really big deal. We should not push this aside. Yes. All right. I will put that under my to-do list as soon as I can. But okay. give me more information about this. Like how often do we have to do the census? So it happens once a decade. So once every 10 years. And the first census happened in 1790. Um, and so we have not missed a census yet. So the so census just released something brand new for the first time ever. Now uh, it's completely online. So there's not a person going to come to your house, which they can eventually. But now with this new component, is it really safe to complete it online? So it is safe. It's a very secure site. And then there are strict federal laws that protect your census responses. So it is against the law for any employee to disclose any census information um, at any time. So ICE, FBI, CIA, no, none of these agencies can get access to this information. Um, so the data collected can only be used for statistical purposes to help inform these important decisions that I mentioned earlier. Um, and, you know, they do, they have a very robust cybersecurity. So, um, you know, you don't have to worry about getting hacked or anyone using your information. All right, just give myself and the audience just like a brief idea of like what are some of the questions that the census may ask since it is a, a very important um phase in government so it's not that many questions it can be completed in one sitting you know maybe you know 10 minutes 10 15 minutes depending on how uh how thoughtful you want to be about it um it's really just the number of people living or staying in your home on april 1st and this is something that they have come out with some more information because with so many people being displaced from COVID, um, they are trying to kind of parse out who, you know, who those people are, right? Um, college kids that were displaced and other people. So if you do have a question about this, you can definitely, you know, get more information on their website. 
So then they also want to know whether your home is owned with or without a mortgage or loan or if it's rented or if it's rent or occupied without rent, kind of what the housing situation is, um, a phone number, um, the name, sex, age, date of birth, and race of each person in the home. Um, and then there is a point for the race question for you to kind of, this is new this year, to fill out specific information about what kind, um, what, what different types of race that you are. Um, and then the relationship to each person in the home. And there is a website that we will publish on our Facebook page that we'll talk about. You can see a preview of all of the questions, which is really helpful before you do it. One thing to note is the census will never ask for the following, your social security number, a bank or credit card, money or donations, or anything on behalf of a, a political party. So if you're worried that someone's asking you these questions, you say, you're not the census, I'm not doing that. So pretty much just like straightforward questions that you can answer comfortably without being ashamed and something that you can, it helps your community, your town. Exactly. How can someone respond to these questions? Is it a multiple choice? Do they have to write short sentences or how does that work? So it is multiple choice. I mean, it, you know, you can kind of check the different box. I filled mine out online, which was really easy. And I went to my 2020 census.gov. I received a little postcard in the mail um, and it had a pin number for me to kind of go in. If you don't have that, you can just go to that website and um, do the online version. So that's really kind of neat that they're doing that. You can also request um, a paper form, or if you have not filled out the online form, they will mail paper forms to your house. And so you can just fill it out, you know, with a pen or a pencil. Um, and then for the first time, you can do it over the phone. Um, and so there's kind of three different ways to do it, uh, kind of hoping to meet everybody where they are. Um, I read yesterday that the census deadline has been extended to August 14th you know, kind of in response to what's going on currently in our environment. If I do take the census, which I am, um, there will be moments where I don't know if I feel comfortable sharing this information with the government or people in my community. Is there an opportunity to just skip answers or skip questions? No, I think this is just a wonderful point to kind of go back and reiterate that, you know, nobody the government isn't going to be using this information, right? It's the Census Bureau. It's purely for statistical gathering. They're not going to be running a report. It's not going to go in an FBI file. So I think there's a lot of distrust in the government and people might be more hesitant to do it. So I just want to give another plug for it being really safe to give all your information. Um, but you can skip questions and it's still com considered a complete count. Um, you can also be, interestingly enough, fined for refusing to answer a question or giving a false answer. Apparently, this is never actually, no one has ever been, rarely been enforced. But, you know, returning a partially filled questionnaire may result in a follow-up phone call or a visit from a census worker. So if you don't want those two things to happen, just fill it out completely. Can the census be uh, translated into a multiple languages? So the paper forms are only available in English and Spanish, but you can respond online or on by phone in Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, French, Haitian, Creole, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Vietnamese. So they're also providing video and printed guides with 59 non-English language, as well as a video in American Sign Language. So there's definitely, you know, you're right, there's so many different kind of people living in the United States. So you just kind of want to make sure that we're reaching all those people. I know you mentioned this earlier in the previous conversations, but due to the pandemic, when is um, the last day you can complete um, the census? August 14th. So we have August 14th, so that's plenty of time. Now, the main question of, of this is like, how does the library like respond to the census? So can you just give us like a little bit of like what our role to Niles is when it comes to the census? So we are a really trusted institution, right? Uh, public libraries are there for the people. And we recognize that this trust makes us a fundamental component in getting a complete count. And we just want to make sure we're there to provide, you know, help in the best way that we can. It's unfortunate, you know, due to the pandemic, the Census Bureau has had to postpone having its field operations. So these were the people who were hired to go knock on doors, right? And talk to you 
And obviously that's not gonna happen with all of the stay at home orders and kind of the social distancing activities that are happening. So they're doing a lot more phone calls. You know, and we were really set up to have people come and do it in person in the library, but um, we are kind of trying to offer our support via phone or, you know, if you can get us online. We are here for you guys. If, if, our, if anybody has any questions about how to fill out the census or what exactly it is. And we can also redirect you to some really awesome organizations that will be able to answer your questions better. Now, this, this is my last question to you. And this is kind of like a two-part question. It's like, so how can uh, the library support patrons through the census remotely? And when, when do the stay-at-home order is lifted, how can we help support um, patrons when they are welcome back into the library? So we do offer, you know, phone support, support via our email, or when we're launching a chat service, hopefully soon. So we will be able to kind of answer any of your questions and help guide you through it. Once we get in the building, we can definitely help you walk you through whether you need assistance on the computer, or if you just say, you know, I'm not a computer person, we can make sure that you know how to request a paper form. We're happy to help. We have a great team of people. Uh, you are one of them that works at the technology desk and we're always happy to help people. We do try our best to help all of our patrons out. Um, so I'd like to reiterate what you just said earlier. You can find all this wonderful information on our Facebook page at Niles Main District Library through Facebook for all the information on the census. And I just wanna say thank you so much for uh, coming on the podcast. We really do appreciate you. Okay, well, you're welcome. And please make sure you get counted. We need a complete count this year. Um, there's a website that will show you what percentage of people have been counted and I will post that as well. And we do have a library webpage also on our website that's dedicated to kind of helping people get counted. So we wanna make sure that we are counted and our voices are heard. So um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about the census, which is a really exciting topic, but uh, it happens only once every 10 years. So we just have to remember that. No, I gotta do the census now, so I'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. Take care. Take care. Thank you so much for Susie for being a part of the uh, podcast with us today. As she mentions before, if you need any help with the census, give us a direct uh, message on our email at books at nileslibrary.org. Now that's a general email that could be used for not just any census, but also um, any questions about reference, children's uh, books, eBooks, everything. And then lastly, we're hosting virtual programming, which is so exciting, but we need you to participate and join us. So to find more virtual programming, all you have to do is go to www.nileslibrary.org and all of our virtual programming will be there. Hope to see you soon and it was good to see you all.